So what is going on guys, I am Black Ops and welcome back to another video on the channel where I was just listening to the latest album from Eminem, The Death of Some Shady, and for some weird reason, the random thought just popped to my mind of all of the deaths we've seen in Call of Duty Zombies. And then the video idea along a similar title popped up, what about all of the deaths of Richtofen? Out of all of the characters that we've seen in COD Zombies, Takio, Nikolai and Dempsey, Misty, Malton, Stuhlinger and Russman, JFK and the rest of the five characters, the Shadows of Evil crew, the Call of the Dead cast, there are so many that you could pick from that we've witnessed die in the storyline, but because Richtofen is still active and alive in our current zombie story in Black Ops Cold War, and now in Black Ops 6 Zombies, I wanted to go back and take a look at all of the deaths of Edward Richtofen. You might think, well, surely there can't be that many, but because of the cycle that the characters were trapped in, each of them died hundreds, possibly thousands, even millions of times. And every time they did, every time the cycle veered off, it was just reset, bringing them back to life. And there were a few instances in the storyline through cutscenes and quotes where we actually witnessed that. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of the deaths that we know of, even though there are many more that we didn't hear about or get to see, of Edward Richtofen. The first one, and probably the most famous, we witnessed in The Giant. In that intro cutscene where we see Ultimus Richtofen has just teleported Maxis and Samantha away, Samantha went to the moon, Maxis went to the crazy place, straight after that event, we see Primus Richtofen steps out of that same teleporter and confronts his Ultimus version. He then pulls his handgun out and shoots himself in the head. It is this event that caused all of the fracturing that we saw in Black Ops 3 zombies across space and time, causing things to appear in places that they shouldn't be. This caused the old western town in America to be transferred to Angola, Africa. It caused Leroy or Arthur as we now know him to be teleported from the castle in Austria during the Great War to this now underground town in Angola. This event of Primus Richtofen shooting his ultimate self in the head changed the timeline. It is arguably the biggest event to happen, and I also think it was probably one of the most satisfying deaths as well. If you know everything Ultimus Richtofen did, not to mention him experimenting on Samantha who was just a child, taking out people's spleens, you would understand. So that was the first death in the giant. We also witnessed Richtofen die in Zetsubonashima a couple of times. One, by the hands of his friend, Takio Masaki. We don't know what went wrong here, of course, unlike what happened in the giant, which was canon, a part of the cycle. This event wasn't supposed to happen, so when Takio killed Richtofen, the cycle was reset. But we see Takio standing over Richtofen's dead body with his hands held in front of him, so we can assume he killed him, and we also see on other shots, he murdered the other premise characters as well. And the second time we witnessed him die in Zetsubo was by the hands, or I should say, the mouth of a thrasher, or the stomach. He is crawling on the ground with blood surrounding him, trying to get away, but the thrasher approaches him from behind, grabs him, pulls him into his stomach, which is an actual game mechanic in case you didn't know, and blood splatters absolutely everywhere. Now in Gorod Karofi, this one is a little bit more controversial, I guess you could say, because we don't actually witness Richtofen die, but you would imagine he does die from this fall, and even though we don't see who pushes him or kicks him or whether he actually falls himself accidentally, in the couple of scenes before and after this, Ultimus Nikolai is exacting revenge on the Primus crew. So we also see Ultimus Nikolai kill his Primus self, Primus Dempsey, and Primus Takio. So it looks like he also kicks Primus Richtofen off this rooftop, and well, I don't think he's surviving that fall. So that was another time we saw Richtofen die in Gorod. Now I was debating whether or not I should include this one because we don't actually see Richtofen die from it, and there's a good chance that he didn't. A normal person would, but Richtofen isn't a normal guy. We see him banging on this wall in front of him, which says no way out, he's cornered, and then zombies approach him from behind. What happens after? we don't see, so his death in this situation in Blood of the Dead is debatable, but it isn't in the ending cutscene where we witness him sacrifice himself for the greater good in order to break the cycle. That ending cutscene where we all cried, right? It wasn't just me. Where Richtofen was abandoned by his friends and left to die. Although it felt and looked like a bad thing, like he was being betrayed, this really was the only way. Richtofen had to give his blood so that the rifts would open, allowing the crew to escape the Alcatraz pocket dimension, which ultimately led to them breaking the cycle. I mean, look at it this way, if Primus Richtofen didn't die here, then he was going to die later on in Tagdo Toten anyway, so he wouldn't have lasted for that much longer, but it was sad to see him crying, telling us that he was the good one. It was one of the only times we'd ever seen Richtofen emotional, he was normally this sturdy, hard character, in some cases quite evil, but he did die in Blood of the Dead, and this event 
was canon. It was a part of the storyline. We also saw Richtofen's die three times in Tag Dototen. The first two deaths applied to Primus Richtofen and Ultimus Richtofen as they were poisoned by Nikolai drinking the red wine. Eventually, they succumbed to it, began to throff out of the mouth, bleed out of their eyes. It does look gruesome. And you just see all of the Primus characters, including Ultimus and Primus Richtofen, lying dead around the campfire. But then, the Ultimus version of Richtofen comes back as undead Richtofen or zombie Richtofen, and for a second time to finish him off, Nikolai shoots him in the head. So we actually see Richtofen die technically three times in Tagdo Totun. Both his Primus and Ultimus self die by the poisoning, and then Ultimus Richtofen comes back as a zombie where he is shot again by Nikolai. But also in Tagdo Totun, when the characters were still alive and sitting around the campfire, Primus Richtofen told the crew a story about Dimension 2210 and what happened there between him and a younger, innocent version of himself. Wouldn't you like to hear a little story? A story you've never heard? A sad story? Oh man, why do you always have to be such a Debbie Downer? Let him speak. It's the story of Dimension 2210. The story of my soul. By the way, you're nodding, Nikolai. I can only assume the Chronorium already showed you the whole sorry tale. Well, for the benefit of the peanut gallery, I was just a boy then, an innocent. I was a sensitive child, a lonely child, orphaned at a young age. I never got to know who I really was. But one day, I learned who I would grow up to be. What do you speak of, Richtofen? I had to do it. The Cronorian told me. I had to trick the poor little innocent me into trusting a complete stranger. Jeez, Richtofen. I don't think I like where this is going. Me neither, Dempsey. But that's the sad truth of it all. I took my own soul. Before it could ever have the chance to flourish. Is it any wonder I'm the way I am? So Richtofen tells us, and we know this, that he killed a child version of himself. He did this so that he could collect his soul inside of the summoning key, where he was then delivered to the house to Dr. Monty. We see this child version of Richtofen, or Eddie as we call him, is still alive in our current zombie storyline. He walked into the light into the new universe at the end of Tag of Toten, and he is now all grown up in Cold War Zombies. But in order for Eddie to even exist right now, this sacrifice of Premise Richtofen having to kill an innocent version of himself, just a child, had to take place. And he talks about how it was emotional and left him scarred, which you could imagine it was. I suppose he wouldn't really have an issue killing an adult version of himself, because in one way or another they'd all done bad things, but this child version of Richtofen was just an innocent kid. He had done nothing wrong. He didn't deserve that. He deserved to grow up but he never got that chance. His life was taken from him, and then he brought that soul to Dr. Monty. Another one that you might not have thought of was in the Call of Duty Zombies comics. Very briefly, when Richtofen finally acquires the Canorium, he looks inside of it. Upon doing so, he gains all of the knowledge from it about his own life, his path, his past and his present, and he also witnesses him killing his ultimate self. He says, but within this book, I see each and every possible version of reality play out before me. Spoiler, I died in every one. So Richtofen reveals to us in every single version of reality that exists, whether it be the one that we're following or the other thousands, millions of realities that exist, that play out, that we don't get to see, in each and every single one of them, it ends with Richtofen dying. There was no scenario in the cycle where Richtofen ever lived. So you can understand besides from the few deaths that we actually get to see, there are so many more, so many other outcomes that have happened where Richtofen died. I can only wonder what kind of deaths he went through. We've seen him being kicked off buildings, eaten by thrashers, shot in the head by himself. What other deaths must Richtofen have succumbed to? And then the final one we hear about in Classified. I wasn't going to include this one, but it is technically a death in my opinion, and that is when the Ultimus crew were teleported back down from the moon to Earth. At that point, of course, because Richtofen previously had switched bodies with Samantha, that meant that he no longer had his soul because of Maxis retrieving his daughter and buried. So when Ultimus Richtofen's body arrived back on Earth from Moon, he was initially presumed dead on arrival, but he still had some brain activity. 
so his comatosed, almost dead body was just left in a cell. But then, a rift opened, out stepped Zombie Richtofen. Zombie Richtofen then touched the comatose body of Ultimus Richtofen, transferring him his soul. Ultimus Richtofen came back to life, started uttering gibberish as he usually does, and Zombie Richtofen faded to dust. This is Cornelius Purnell. Report 715, October 13th, 1963. I'm filing this report on behalf of Private Gordon. Private Gordon was working graveyard in Hangar 4, where our new test subjects are being kept. At 0300 this morning, Private Gordon reports a, quote, bright blue oval-shaped light beam materialized in the room, end quote. Out of said light beam stepped, and I quote, a zombie dressed in a World War II German military uniform. This zombie did not interact with Private Gordon, but instead slowly walked up to the comatose body of Dr. Edward Richthofen, who up until now we've been unable to resuscitate. Private Gordon then observed this zombie touching the body of Dr. Richthofen, at which point the zombie turned to ash, and Dr. Richthofen immediately let out a guttural shriek and began cackling. I cannot verify Private Gordon's story, but what I can tell you is that as of this morning, Dr. Richthofen is very much alive, and he is very animated. So much so, we've since had to have him sedated. So I think, technically, that's also a death as well. So those are just 11 different deaths that we have witnessed of Richthofen, but like I said, there were so many more that we never got to see. But out of all of the characters, he has to be the one that we've seen died the most. And even though he is my favourite character, I can't say he didn't deserve 99% of these. Even his child version. You know what? F*** him. So, there we go. That is all I have for you for today's video. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.